the crop on the bench this time is zinnias. So Will, what can you tell us about the risk factors specific to zinnias? Because it's not, and it's not all zinnias that we're talking about, right? Correct. Yeah, the first thing we want to make sure we're real clear on is the Zinnia marylandica. This is the species that it's an interspecific hybrid. It's the Profusion series and the Zahara series. These were specifically bred to be disease tolerant so that they basically, um, they will prevent that breakdown that we see with the Zinnia elegans. You know, the old time state fair, which people love, that's been around since time began and basically tends to have a lot of disease problems um, where you have lower leaves breakdown. So we really wanna make sure that everyone stays focused on that this conversation about Zinnia is about Zinnia elegans types. So this is the um, non-profusion, non-Zahara series. So it's Dreamlands, it's Magellans, it's um, that type of large flowered um, Zinnias. Also the, um, there's other um, series. So always check to see what species am I growing because that will help guide you as to whether you're at risk and you need to manage those risks to be successful. No, that sounds good. So let's talk a little bit about the specific risk factors that we're looking for. Okay, the specific risk factors in the case of Zinnia elegans are basically three primary diseases. There, it is, they're seed-borne. That's why you need to make sure that you have seed that's been treated. But do you normally see these on the cotyledons and the first true leaves? So we always want to be focusing early in the crop to see, are we starting to see the problem? Better yet, want to treat? And we'll talk about that in a minute. The first disease that we want to look at is bacterial leaf spot. It's a Xanthomonas compestra zinnia. It's a very specific um, bacterial leaf spot, Xanthomonas, that only goes to zinnias. That's why it's um, path of our zinnia. Um, you see these irregular spots. Notice that they're not round, they're not square. They basically all over, they'll cross um, over the, um, they, will, they stay kind of within the veins, but they get black. Now the identifying characteristics, Bill, can you see that, that yellow halo that you see right around the perimeter of the um, disease? That's where the disease is starting to take off for the next cycle where these circles continue to get bigger and bigger. That's um, a good indicator of a bacterial leaf spot. If we look at fungal leaf spots, particularly alternaria, it's very common. It's alternaria you see as it's a red to purplish um, um, leaf spot um, that cross over the veins. This is very typical. They're over the veins um, and that they continue to get bigger and bigger. And as they get larger, the centers tend to turn gray tan. And if it's really bad, they'll fall out. So you'll actually have look like shotgun holes in the leaves. Um, if you have a very severe um, infection, you actually can see dark brown lesions, which are black spots on the stem right near the soil line. You might confuse it with rhizoctonia, but it usually comes out as alternaria because there's a little bit of purpling that um, purpling or reddening that comes in. One that disease that we see many times late in the crop that's not seed borne, but it is a common problem of um, zinnias when you um, use overhead watering is powdery mildew. Um, and basically what you end up with is, is these white, gray, fluffy, irregular spots that are all over the leaves. Um, and they will basically come onto the stem and they'll also get into flower parts. You normally don't see xanthomonas on flowers. You sometimes will see alternaria on flowers. But that's really what you're looking for. And we wanna be looking at these risk um, factors because they're basically what causes all of our pain and our loss of crop quality. So those seem like very visible, uh, distinct, um, you know, uh, diseases to look for on the crop. So growers that are out walking their crop are probably going to see those uh, as they're as they're looking at it. Correct? Yes. Oh yeah. You should be. They're quite distinct if you look at it. Look early because that's when you should probably start seeing it. If you have a lot of other conditions, which we'll talk about in a minute, you can see it later in the crop. As you can see, the alternaria here. You know, this is another example. If you would have monitored, you would have seen these spots much earlier. And then there's also other spots even further down the crop that um, would have been detectable weeks ago. And of course, spring at this point, a little bit late. Monitoring is key. 
Excellent. So now that the growers uh, listening know what to look for, the bacterial leaf spot, fungal leaf spot, pottery mildew, what are the strategies and programs uh, to minimize and manage that risk? I guess, ultimately, what are your recommendations to produce a clean, healthy zinnia crop? Well, what I would really like to see is that you look at it from a cultural standpoint, first of all, because without a good cultural program, all the chemicals in the world are not going to give you success. So the first one on this is use treated and tested seeds. Zinnia seed is um, by and large been treated because um, it just makes sure it's healthy, gets through germination without any serious disease problems. <clears throat> and all the zinnia elegans that are commercially available um, that are worth buying have been tested. If you don't, if they haven't been tested, don't bother, you're just looking for trouble. So buy the Zinnia Elegans um, series that have been tested. Make sure that you begin your spray programs as soon as the cotyledons unfold. As, as we know that this is a seed-borne disease, as the cotyledons unfold, they're basically picking up the disease off the seed coat. And then as soon as you start getting the leaves wet, which of course you're going to get the cotyledons wet, keep them germinating, you're now gonna end up with, of course, the disease starting to take off, which will show up five to 10 days later, which is of course too late. You know, once you start getting the foliage, try to minimize how much overhead water you're applying. Try to really minimize that especially if you haven't been putting your fungicides on per, um, protectively so you, and preventably. So make sure that you minimize that at all, that you're not just misting them all the time. Um, when you grow them outside, that's a real concern. The other thing that's really important with Zinnia elegans is that you try to limit the amount of ammonia that you're putting on the plants. Slow release fertilizers, heavy in ammonia, not a good idea because they tend to make the plants very soft. Soft plants are much more susceptible to um, xanthomonas alternaria, and then subsequently to um, powdery mildew. So let's make sure that we're um, using a 14014, 15015, keeps the plants better toned, or 13213, or one of those fertilizers that are predominantly nitrate based. Um, as we mentioned in the disease triangle, if you've got the disease present, which are, we know that's going to be present in the, the average um, production unit, and then you also have got the right environment. And during the summer months when we're doing a lot of zinnias, it's hard not to have the right um, environment to get the disease to spread. That you really need to make sure that you are blocking the problem. And what we wanna be doing is, is using um, the correct fungicides or bactericides. And for Xanthomonas, we're using bactericides. Um, what I, we've presented here is some data that um, Ann Chase um, has prepared where she's analyzed a lot of different um, disease studies that have been done and then rated what kind of control. So if you have a G, that means that it had good control. Um, VG means that it was very good. EXC means it's excellent. You kind of get the concept there, Bill, so that you know kind of how's the performance. Make sure that when you're, you're planning your um, fungicide, um, bactericide control strategy, that you're mixing in um, the correct chemicals to get more than one disease. Early on, we're of course very concerned about bacterial leaf spot. So we wanna make sure that we've got a copper. There's a lot of different coppers available, not just phyton, but you can use any of the different copper hydroxide materials. And then by the way, it also gives you good alternaria control, which is very critical early on in the season. One of the big mistakes we see growers do is, is that they put triathlon on, which has excellent xanthomonas control, but notice it doesn't have any um, alternaria control. And then they wonder, why do I have alternaria? Well, triathlon doesn't do a good job on that. Otherwise, you know, if you use medallion, orchestra, pageant, any of these intrinsic um, fungicides, great alternaria control but they don't do anything to, for you for bacteria. So really think of what your strategy is, especially early on, that you're may either using one that has multiple um, disease control or that you're tank mixing two different chemicals so that you are able to get a broad spectrum control on those plants, especially early on, because the earlier you can control it, the easier it is to control later on. So that's pretty much um, the control. Use the right culture, use the right chemistry at the right time, and pretty much you should be successful without too much trouble growing Zinnia elegans. 
Excellent. That's a lot of really good information, uh, but but clear and concise because I know that as growers uh, move into the production of these crops, um, they're they're gonna. I want to sort of revisit some of the some of what they know and learn a little bit about uh, some of the new tools and new programs uh, available to help manage any sort of an at-risk crop, including zinnias. Finally, before we wrap up this discussion of zinnias as an at-risk crop, let me call out some additional resources for you to check out. First is a set of at-risk crop guides or white papers that are available at ballseed.com slash quickculture slash production guides. You can find a link in the show notes for this presentation, as well as a link to the slideshow presentation that we'll reference. So if you're just listening, feel free to click and check out the slides and go over them with your team. Also, wanted to call out the Tech on Demand podcast brought to you by Grower Talks. So in addition to episodes like this one, you're going to find many other podcasts covering a range of greenhouse specific topics with more being added all the time. You can subscribe to the Tech On Demand podcast on your favorite app like Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and many more, or visit growertalks.com slash tech on demand. So once again, Will, thanks for your time and all the hard work that you and your team put in collecting information to help growers succeed with these at-risk crops. Well, thanks a lot, Bill. It's, it's always a good thing to share grow with growers um, ways that they can make their life a little easier and, and much more profitable. Absolutely. So I'm Bill Calkins with Tech On Demand, wishing you a fantastic season. Take care out there. Thanks.